Well, good evening, my beautifully blessed people. How are you guys doing this evening? I pray that you are having a wonderful evening this evening and that you've had a wonderful and a blessed day today. So this video is about those of you who are being pressured into working extra hours, working overtime or volunteering, and you're not getting paid for it. And what many of you don't know that there's actually scripture to uh, uh, let you know that it is a sin for your boss to have you to work and not pay you, right? So we're going to go through that very shortly. So let me just uh, say before we go into the video, I like to thank many of you who are new subscribers uh, I should say many of you, all of you who are subscribers to my channel, who have subscribed, as well as those of you who are current subscribers, and I hope that you would be willing to invite other people to join in on the message, as well as to send the messages out, because it's important, you guys, that we distribute this message, all right? These messages, my videos please, I would love for you guys to share it because God wants us to be able to be made aware of what's going on and also to know that a lot of things that are being done, the scriptures actually cover it. So the word of God is covering exactly a lot of the things that are happening in our lives, all right? To me, the oldest book of guidance and direction is the Word of God. So, that being said, let's get right to it. So, many of you are being manipulated and many of you are being uh, somewhat coerced into having to work over and they want you to volunteer Nobody, listen to me, nobody has a right to manipulate you, to threaten you, or to retaliate against you should you choose not to work extra hours or should you choose to refuse. You have a legal right to be paid for the hours that you work. One thing for sure, a lot of these bosses who are asking you to do this or who are trying to play trickery and to kind of get you crossed up, making you, you know, believe that they've done you such a favor by just hiring you and that sort of thing. Listen to me. Don't fall for the trick. Guess what? They're not working for free. So why should you? You have a right to be paid for the work that you do. And it is high time that you guys realize that. More importantly, it's an even more important for you to know what the Word of God says about that and how the Lord deals with them for treating you that way. All right. So let me um, kind of give you, I'm going to, I've got some notes that I've made here. And so let's, let's just jump right into the scriptures, the scriptures on, uh, you working and uh, not being compensated, all right? So some of these scriptures, I'm going to give more than one version. So um, just know that these scriptures will also be in the description box so that you can research them at a later time. You can look at them at a later time, all right? So let's start with the first one, Leviticus, the 19th chapter, verse 13. And this is going to be the King James Version. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, nor neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. That is the King James Version of Leviticus 19, chapter, verse 13. This will be the English Standard Version of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 13. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired worker shall not remain with you all night until the morning. Guess what? It's not their money, so they don't get to keep it. 
And according to the word of God, it is wrong for them to keep it. So let's talk about oppress. Let me give you the definition of oppress for those of you who don't know what that means. To keep someone in subservience and hardship, especially by the unjust exercise of authority. Subservience, let me give you the definition for that. It's the condition of being less important than something else or submissive, all right? Let's go to the next scripture. First Timothy, the fifth chapter, verse 18. This is the English Standard Version. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox when it, when it uh, treads out the grain and the laborer desires his wages. 1 Timothy 5th chapter, 18th verse, King James Version, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. You have a right to be paid for your work. This next scripture is going to come from the book of Jeremiah, and it talks about God's warning for disobedience. And little do these bosses know, by them holding back your pay, refusing to pay you, and they are uh, using these tactics to try to persuade you threaten you about your job, to manipulate you, try to coerce you, or to retaliate against you. Little do they know it is disobedience to God and God is going to deal with them for that. So let me go a little bit further. This next verse is from Jeremiah, the 22nd chapter, verse 13. This is the King James Version. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. Jeremiah, the 22nd chapter, verse 13. This is in the English Standard Version. Woe to him who builds his house by unrighteousness and his upper rooms by injustice, who makes his neighbor serve him for nothing and does not give him his wages. Again, these are scriptures that say you have a right to be paid. And the Lord is saying, woe to them. Anytime the Lord says, woe to them, that's a warning to them. All right, let's move on. Malachi, the third chapter, verse five. Um, I'm going to read the uh, King James Version first, and then I will follow up with the English Standard Version. Malachi 3, 5, King James Version. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear me not, saith the Lord of hosts. This will be Malachi, the third chapter, fifth verse in the English Standard uh, Version. Then will I draw near to him. Then, no, let me, let me say it the right way. <laughs> then will I draw near to you for judgment. This is the Lord speaking. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired workers in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, against those who thrust aside the sojourner, which is the stranger, and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord is saying, if you oppress these people, and you hold their money from them. They're working. They have a right to it. He is going to bring swift. He's going to be a swift witness. And judgment is going to be upon those who wrong you. Let's go on. James, the fifth chapter, verse four. Behold, the wages of the laborer who mold your fields which you kept back by fraud are crying out against you and the cries of the harvesters harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. People are asking for their money. They're pleading. Many of them are pleading with these employers for their money. And you think God don't hear them. Listen to this again. Behold the wages of the laborer who mold your fields 
which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. God hears them when they cry out. Employees, here's what employers need to realize. You expect God to treat you, treat you right, to be just to you, then guess what? You have to treat people the way you want God to treat you. See, many of you all, you get these projects, you overwork people, you talk down to people. Many of these people don't get breaks. Many of you who are working in these warehouses, you have a legal right to a break. These people got you working, working over. You check your paychecks, make sure that they are rightfully paying you. Because a lot of times these employers will put pressure on you and they won't pay you. How do I know this? Been there, done that. It's happened to me many a times. And you get to a point, enough is enough. So hopefully after these messages, you guys will take a stand and go before the Lord and ask God to help you. To give you the courage to stand up for yourselves. You have families. You have responsibilities. Don't you think you have a right to be paid for your work? Your bosses don't miss any money. Not a dime. So why do you have to miss your money? Exactly. All right, let's move on. Colossians, the fourth chapter, verse one. This is the King James Version. Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. That's right. Treat them right. That's what the word of God says. The next Bible verse, Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, verses 14 through 15. I'm going to read the King James Version first, and then I will uh, uh, read the... um, the English Standard Version. So let's go. Deuteronomy 24, chapter, verse 14. Thou shalt not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. Verse 15. And his day thou shalt give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it lest he cry against against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. Here goes the uh, English Standard Version, Deuteronomy 24, chapter verses 14 through 15. You shall not oppress a hired worker who is poor and needy, whether he is one of your brothers or one of your sojourners, which is a stranger, who are in your land within your towns. You shall give him his wages on the same day before the sun sets, for he is poor and counts on it, lest he cry against you to the Lord and you be guilty of sin. Again, it is a sin for you to hold these people's money and making them work and don't pay them. The final verse, Romans, the fourth chapter, fourth verse, King James Version. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. The English Standard Version, Romans, the fourth chapter, fourth verse. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but his due. That's right. Romans, the fourth chapter, fourth verse, the English Standard Version. Now to the one with works, now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. Right, you owe him. Pay the man, pay the lady, quit playing. Because what you will find out, God will create a move in their life. And you will find yourself, a lot of you are going to find yourself in the same position as them, and they will be elevated. Many of you are going to lose some of those same people that you are not paying. And they have a right to be paid. They have families that they have to feed. 
They have to put food on the table. They have to pay for transportation to get to or from work. Some of them have medical reasons. Some of them have to pay other people to watch their children. Some of them have basic needs that they need to have met. Some of them have to pay mortgages. Some of them have to pay rent. Some of them have to rely on nothing but an extra income to help someone else. And you have the audacity to strip these people of that. You just heard what God said. It is a sin for you to do because when they cry out to God, he hears them. Right. So the message is this. Pay them. Pay them their just due. It is not a gift for you to not pay them. That's not a gift. Their work, their labor is not a gift. No, no, no. According to the word of God, you are to pay them. And if you don't pay them, it is a sin. All right, wonderful people. I pray that this message resonates with many of you. I pray that you will share these videos, like, share, and subscribe to my videos. And let's get the message out there. Let's start doing things where we can get the message out to people. And let's have a conversation about it. Write to me if you'd like to write to me. I'll put my email in the description box as well. Or if you want to just talk with me here on YouTube. All right. We thank you. I thank you so much for your time this evening. And most of all, just know... May the blessings of the Lord be upon each and every one of you. And I love you with the love of Jesus. And until the next video, we'll see you. Bye now.